Sup friends, today we're painting Black Panther. What's up, Leron here, thank you for joining me in another video, and today we're gonna paint Black Panther. Here's the original reference photo. Now, I did a bit of editing and tried to simplify it just a bit, and this is the result I got. Um, I think this is a really good lesson in negative painting, and you'll see this especially moving in from the first layer to the second layer, okay? So what I'm gonna do is really squeeze the, the painting time because I wanted to uh, be a very quick and fun video, okay? But notice that, pay attention to that, and I'm gonna explain uh, exactly what I'm doing. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first off, I just wanted to show you uh, some of the drawing stages as well. So what I did was just create a few guidelines and I did have to measure quite a bit to make sure that I get the proportions correctly. Uh, drawing is really, it doesn't matter how experienced you are, it's really challenging to just draw um, without having some kind of measurement. So I measured, for example, from the head, uh, what distance is between the head and the arm to the left, and then I uh, extrapolated from that uh, the length of the chest and the legs and everything. And now I'm coming back after I set up most of the kind of reference points, I'm coming back and doing the actual details. And I find that the details for me are rather easy to get in once I get the overall structure, okay? And this is also true for when I work on landscapes. I do the exact same uh, technique. It's it's a way of putting in a skeleton just to begin with and then adding all of the details, okay? And notice how I'm drawing where the light and shadow are. So this is extremely important. Now, what you see here is me putting all the details that we will soon paint, uh, negative paint around, okay? Uh, and you see all of these lines on the mask. These are extremely important. Now notice that I just put lines and then I'll figure out where to paint them, okay? Uh, so for now I'm just putting in lines and I'm gonna negative paint around those lines. So now starting with the first wash and this is kind of a under painting or under mask um, and notice how I blend it with the background. This is important because I don't want to have any uh, white areas or spaces that I just missed. Um, so I'm pulling the, the paint outside of the just the, the character itself and onto the background. And this is really important. Uh, this film I heard created some <laughs> serious hype around it. So I just wanted to uh, do this video and do this painting. And while working on it, I figured out it's really good content for just to talk about negative painting and some other concepts. Okay, so you see, I'm not too worried if some of the wash dries and then I come back to it, that's fine. Uh, all I care about is using a lot of colors to have some kind of a variety in that initial wash. And also just, um, having it as even as possible and blended outwards, okay, towards the edges of the, the character itself. Sometimes I wor I'll work a little differently, but with this one, this is how I chose to go. Now we're gonna soon finish with this first layer uh, and start working on the second one. And the second one is extremely important, as you will see, because we will just bring out the highlights using negative painting. So now you see I'm painting around the lines that I set up earlier, and I'm doing this very carefully. This is the stage where I have to be the most careful, okay? Now, you remember that you're actually coloring closed off areas. So now I'm starting a new area and now to the right there will be another one. So I'm trying not to start too many areas at once because then I have to make sure I finish them up before the paint dries, okay? So I'm working on them one area at a time except for the middle part where I just did it in a few uh, kind of segments, okay? Now I'm pushing from the face onto the chest area and this is or the neck uh, and this is really important because you want to get it to be as even as possible. If it's not 100% even that's still fine, okay, but you want to get it this way. Now with watercolor this is how we work from light to dark, so this was a good opportunity to do that and to demonstrate it. Uh, notice how I'm negative painting around anything that, that I want to leave as a highlight. I'm gonna do this with the necklace thingy that he has and with the those um, um, those toothed um, gloves or things around his head, uh, around his hands, uh, which is extremely important. Um, I don't usually do figures like that or action poses or comic style, uh, so this was a challenge for me, but on the other hand, I find that these types of challenges uh, help me grow. I'm, I'm gonna talk about that in just a few moments, but I want to divert your attention to the negative painting going on just this very moment. 
uh, around the necklace. And this is extremely important. Um, and, and it's going to be a recurring theme throughout this painting. Uh, you'll see soon when I add the background and things like this. Now you see I'm avoiding the sides because there's going to be a highlight there. Now you can't see it now, the highlight, because it's just the same value as the background. But once I'm going to put in the background, um, <coughs> sorry, you're going to uh, see this. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I forgot what I was starting to talk about earlier. But anyway, um, now I'm just... The, the area where the legs are is just a big kind of blur. Uh, I'm not worried too much about it. Uh, you will see later on. Um, so yeah, so this this whole painting is built in layers of negative painting. Um, sometimes you can go through entire paintings and, and not do even one bit of that. And you just paint whatever is in front of you. Um, but yeah, I was just talking to a friend about the differences between um, between watercolor and other opaque mediums because he does more opaque mediums and and he was wondering how to get all the highlights in and things like this and I and I told him that watercolor is from light to dark and basically generally speaking there is no going back okay you can go back you can correct you can use masking fluid you can do a lot of tricks um, but generally speaking there is no uh, going back uh, once you put a dark color it's it's it can be hard uh, to lift it can be challenging so uh, yeah. so now the background and this is where the theme of negative painting uh, comes back um, notice how I'm carefully painting around his uh, body now you want to be careful I use the left area as a stopping point uh, you'll soon see because it's not a significant area at all so it's okay to stop there and here the hand very conveniently helps me to stop this wash so I don't have to worry about moving it more downwards and now I'm using the stopping point I put earlier um, just to continue I'm going to talk about the concept of stopping points in an upcoming video and you will see it's really cool and it helps you just when you have a large wash to handle with uh, that, that's sometimes challenging to handle um, so now I'm connecting the background this is extremely important to the leg okay and the reason why sorry I had to blow my nose the reason why I do that is because I want it to look as even as possible and now the negative painting will bring out the highlight on the uh, on his side uh, between the chest and the back um, so this is how it works, generally speaking. And notice how where it's light, I'm pushing the contrast even more. And where it's dark, I'm not. So his hand is relatively dark. So I'm not going to put a dark background behind it. That's just going to be... It's going to be the purpose, unless that's really how it goes in the reference. Uh, so now comes, I think, one of the most important stages, and that is to set up the darker shadows. Probably the darkest, almost darkest. We're going to have some afterwards. Uh, and notice how I barely blend edges, but now I did blend some edges. So you can many times go through uh, full paintings and not blend any edge. Uh, and I will do a tutorial soon on blending edges because I think it is an important topic. And I didn't yet get to cover it. Uh, but here, up till this point, I barely blended anything. So <coughs> it's an important technique, but you don't always... Uh, need to use it um, so yeah so now I'm putting in the darkest this is kind of the the design on on his suit or whatever that is the clothes um, carefully continuing with the negative painting trend um, if there's one thing I would have changed and it became glaringly obvious after I was done with it is I would have added a bit of uh, red just a bit of red or the of the of the quinacridone rose to the initial uh, yellow areas the yellow sections uh, what happened was the first wash was just kind of uh, yellow and blue at the top and it's it's a shame because I missed some of the variants on the highlights and I didn't think about it before I didn't think about it in advance um, so all of the highlights are generally yellow and it can be a bit boring especially on the on the mask this is where it's missing the most um, so yeah so that could have been avoided by that um, so now I'm kind of trying to alleviate it with putting more reds and notice how I'm still negative painting around the it's like uh, shreds or pieces of rocks that are flying around um, and I want to make sure that they pop so they're gonna have strong highlights on them so I'm leaving them uh, as light as the initial wash now I'm adding some dark spots to the uh, to the to what I just put in here uh, but in any case I'm trying to leave all of those uh, little pieces of, of rock or whatever flying around and then I'm gonna add a strong shadow underneath them and it, it's gonna make them pop immediately um, I'm really pleased with the how dynamic this pose is 
and also how I made dynamic use of watercolor, I think, because <clears throat> it does uh, bring the feeling of movement and, and uh, it has this dark mood and uh, I really like the way it turned out. And now uh, the hand has strong shadows on it and strong contrasts and this is used to bring it forward to us, towards us, because it is the closest to us out of this entire uh, figure. So now we're almost done, just a few shadows here and there. Um, the the pieces of rock or stone that are flying around, the debris. Uh, I'm also going to add some shadows around. Uh, and, and you can start noticing how it could have been much better if I did add a bit of uh, red onto the highlights. Um, so, so now really last touches. I'm trying to figure out what I should add, uh, but I'm trying to be careful not to overdo it because it is easy to overdo it. And quite frankly, I could have continued this painting. I could have improved and added upon it and and did some more stuff. So here I'm adding the debris and you'll soon see uh, the final result just signing it and here is the final result. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you enjoyed it too. Okay, I'm done here. Well, frankly, I can go on and add more things and add more details, but actually I like the way it looks now um, and I'd like to avoid overworking this one. Uh, and so I'll probably just stop now. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of negative painting just to bring out all of these uh, highlights, the necklace kind of thing, the uh, the nails, just you saw I started with the very first very loose wash and then came back and painted um, very carefully around all of these highlights and many times you'll find yourself uh, doing it this way and, um, and it's really a, a good way of bringing those out. I could have probably just worked really slowly or maybe added the, bl the blue and then add the yellow but I really wanted to do it uh, that way so hopefully you enjoyed it and now comes the magic moment of removing the tape so I wanted to do this live with you um, so let's go ahead and notice how uh, a beautiful frame is created around the painting and it'll already make it look better because now it looks a bit messy and uh, it does lack the frame as you can see but once I remove the tape especially from the upper part I think this will be uh, really significant here there we go and we've got it all uh, I really hope you enjoyed this process uh, let's wrap up this video so this is it friends I hope you enjoyed this video I really had a lot of fun doing this uh, painting process and hopefully you saw how uh, it's a great lesson in negative painting and um, building shapes by painting around them and it's a bit of a mental stretch sometimes it's not as easy to do that um, in many cases when you're just getting started the classic example is if you're painting a cafe or some kind of a scene and it has text in it and you have to paint around it it's so challenging especially with watercolor that you can't really go from dark to light so you end up doing a lot of negative painting unlike other media where you can just add opaque paint on top of things and bring out highlights it doesn't work the same way in watercolor so I really hope you enjoyed this um, if this is the first video you see by me or if you still haven't don't forget to subscribe to my channel I have tons of other painting processes and drawing processes and and uh, product reviews and paint reviews and lots of lots of fun stuff um, I'll also put a link to my podcast if you want to hear me talk more about creativity and productivity and the business of art I'm gonna put a link to my patreon page if you want to support me and also to my Instagram and snapchat where these are the easiest places to ask me a quick question if you uh, want to contact me or something like this thank you so much and I will talk to you again and I will see you again in another vid real soon